It's good to be back here once again. Today, I'll be doing a review on the 2022 Paramount Plus, Nickelodeon and Hasbro series. And this one is Transformers, Earthspark. Now, before I was done the scenario of my review, I have recently watched some episodes of the show on Nickelodeon, and I was like, wow, is that another Transformers series? This is like amazing. Having Transformers on Nickelodeon, especially when the Transformers movies were produced by Paramount Pictures. The show is based on Transformers toy franchise from Hasbro. Transformers, Earth's Park is originally and currently airing on Nickelodeon, Nicktoons, and currently streaming, on Paramount Plus as its original series, Hulu. It's beta on Disney Plus, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, and Apple TV. Fifteen years after the space bridge to Cybertron is destroyed, Ending the civil war between the Autobots and the Decepticons, the Malto family relocates from Philadelphia to the small town of Whitwicky, Pennsylvania. There, young Robbie and Mo Malto witness the birth of a new breed of Earth-born Transformers called Terrans, who become emotionally bonded to the two via special cyber sleeves on their arms. Now adopted into the family and being mentored by Bumblebee, the Terrans work with the Autobots, the former Decepticon leader Megatron the organization GHOST, and the children to protect their new life from the remaining rogue Decepticons and other villains while finding their place in the world. The writing for this show is mostly pretty alright as while it does have a lot of moments that drag and there is a bit of slow burn on top of having some pretty weak jokes and dumb moments, but there is a good amount of neat and well handled ideas and aspects of this show like the introduction of a new type of transformer with the Terrans and having them be able to bond with human ZT style, and having a main human threat to be concerned about other than just the Decepticons. And on top of that, there is some pretty fun action. There are some decently funny jokes, there are some well-written and executed plot threads and story arcs that do provide some fairly good drama and suspense, and the tone is relatively light-hearted while making room for some much darker moments. The action scenes of this show are thankfully just as fun and awesome as those from the previous shows and can also get pretty intense and suspenseful such as the various encounters and clashes where the Maldos, Terrans, and Autobots face off against the rogue Decepticons and Mandroids forces, and them getting into tie jams and getting out of them as well as escaping certain death scenarios. The humor of this show is pretty mixed as there are definitely some pretty dumb and unfunny jokes and moments in this show. But there are also times where it can be decently funny and get some fair chuckles. The show does have some pretty good heart and drama which does gives the show some nice tender and dramatic moments like the growing bond between the Maldo family and the Terrans, Megatron and his new life following his redemption and facing off against his former Decepticon allies, and certain character deaths. The animation of the show is pretty solid as while it may not look as awesome as the animation from Prime, it does still look good and well made with the characters all having some pretty decent designs that are accompanied by some pretty fluid and lively movements. The backgrounds and settings are very well crafted and do have a great amount of detail, and there are some very nicely done special effects. The characters of the show are mostly pretty solid as while they can be kinda generic and some can have their more annoying bits. They do manage to be decently likable and do have a good amount of chemistry and dynamics wit and humor, charm and charisma, and growth and development such as the ever-heroic Autobots consisting of Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Elita One, Wheeljack, RC, Grimlock, and a reformed Megatron, the Malto family consisting of brother and sister Robbie and Mo, and their mother and father Dot and Alex, the newly discovered Terrans consisting of Twitch, Thrash, Hashtag, Jawbreaker, and Nightshade, some of the other characters like Agent Schloeder and some of his fellow GHOST agents, and a pretty good selection of villains like the rogue Decepticons such as Swindle, Hardtop, Soundwave, Starscream, Skywarp, Nova Storm, Skull Cruncher, Tarantulas, and Breakdown, and the more vile members within GHOST such as Mandroid and Agent Croft. The voice acting of the show is pretty solid as the voice actors do a pretty decent job with their performances such as Alan Judic as Optimus Prime, Danny Pudi as Bumblebee, Cindy Michaela as Robbie, 
Catherine Cavari as Twitch, Zio Broadnax as Mo, Zaina Robinson as Thrash, Benny Latham as Dot, Sissy Jones as Ilda, Michael T. Downey as Wheeljack, Martha Marion as RC, Keith David as Grimlock, Rory McCann as Megatron, Nolan North as Swindle and Hardtop, Sean Ken in a sound wave, Steve Bloom as Starscream, Nicole Dubok as Skywarp and Nova Storm, Troy Baker as Shockwave, Diedrich Batter as Mandroid, Carrie Walgren as Agent Croft, Mark Evan Jacobson as Agent Schloeder, and more. The music is pretty solid as it does sound good and well composed, and it does do a good job at capturing the show's relatively light-hearted and action-packed tone. So, what is my final verdict on this Paramount Plus original series, I'm giving it, a 7 out of 10. Some of the other Transformers shows like the Prime Wars trilogy and the War for Cybertron trilogy, those both have similar pros and cons like they do have some pretty deent animation and some cool action scenes, but the writing for both was very messy, they were a bit too melodramatic, and some of the characters would just make some very dumb and frustrating choices.